assalamu alaikum dear students now today uh, we have a, another topic that is consequences of special theory of relativity that is topic number 18.3 okay so now we are summarized some some uh, summarize some uh, applications of special theory of relativity in this lecture so first uh, we are talking about the equivalence between mass and energy the equivalence the equivalence between mass and energy okay the rest mass means the proper mass okay so for example if you want to calculate if you want to calculate the proper mass so you should uh, take it in the inertial frame of reference means the mass should be at rest with respect to u so if the mass is at rest with respect to u so you can observe its original mass its proper mass so that is called the rest mass okay the rest mass of an object is equivalent to the certain quantity of energy okay means mass shows certain amount of energy mass can be converted into energy under extra can extra ordinary circumstances okay and conversely we can say that the energy can be converted into mass means mass and energy according to the einstein relation mass and energy are under con uh, are interconvertible to one another for example part of mass is converted into energy in nuclear fusion and some of the energy is converted into mass okay according to the einstein relation energy and mass are the form of one another how energy is all, energy is called the expand form of mass and mass is called the compact form of energy okay now first consequence of the einstein theory of relativity is length contraction okay so first we are studying the length contraction contraction mean the length is shrink the length is get minimized of its original length okay <coughs> if an object is at rest with respect to an observer so it is lying in an inertial frame of reference so we can easily calculate its original length that is called l not so l not means the original length l not means the proper length L not means the original length or the proper length. Okay. And if if a uh, the, the if an object or a rod a rod of length L is moving, so it means if we if the object is moving and we want to calculate its length, so that length is called L. That is called relativistic length. Relativistic length mean observed length okay when uh, this is the observed length when the object is in motion or the or the observer is in motion okay now <coughs> we have formula for the length contraction as l is equal to l not 1 minus v square by c square under root okay so this length is called the relativistic length this length is called the proper length v means the speed of object c means the speed of light okay and this is called the relativistic factor so this is the relativistic factor suppose if we have one observer which has a frame of reference x y and z this is the coordinate system or the reference frame okay another system that is x dash y dash and z dash this is another system which have a meter stick meter stick means one meter so it means both the systems are observing both the observer observing the same meter stick okay this from this frame of reference we are observing this meter stick and from this frame of reference we are also observing the same meter stick okay suppose if this frame of reference is moving along with the meter stick 
means x dash y dash z dash frame of reference is moving with the speed of light along with the meter stick okay so for according with respect to this system the meter stick is at rest with respect to this system the meter stick is at rest if the meter stick is at rest so look at here putting the value uh, of velocity here so here the meter stick is at rest so we will put 0 so 0 by c is 0 so we will get l naught is 1 so it is equal to l naught so the length observed by this frame of reference will be its proper length why because according to the uh, <coughs> Einstein's special theory of relativity that whenever the object the classical physics or the modern physics we are studying it in inertial frame so it will be it will give the accurate values so here this object is at rest with respect to this system so if the object is at rest because the system is moving along with the meter stick is moving so it means both are at rest with respect to one another so it means this is from this system we can observe its proper length its original length its accurate length okay now talk about the old system which is x dash which is x y and z okay this uh, frame of reference is at rest and this meter stick is moving with respect to this system and this meter stick is moving with the speed of light with respect to this system okay so now we are ta taking observation uh, with respect to the old system with respect to the old system so with respect to this old system the speed of the meter stick is c means the uh, meter stick is moving with the speed of light so here l is equal to l naught 1 minus v square by c square this is the formula for the realistic length so here the speed is c the speed of ride is c so c square by c square is cancelled so it is l naught 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 so the realistic length will be 0 so the meter stick will be disappear why disappear because that meter stick will be converted into energy so it is no more material mass so it is converted into energy so that is called we say that the length will be contracted with respect to this old system and the length will be proper length with respect to uh, that system which is moving along with the meter stick okay so it means whenever an object is moving with respect to some observer length will be changing and length will be decreasing with respect to that system <coughs> so we can calculate the exact length we can calculate the exact length when it is lying in inertial frame of reference okay now talking about another consequence another application of uh, special Einstein special to relativity that is time dilation okay now we are studying time dilation <coughs> the time dilation <coughs> we are calculating the time for the event for the processes in different frame of references okay the time taken for an event to occur with its rest frame is called the proper time means if some ob some object if a clock is at rest with respect to an observer so it is lying in an inertial frame so we can calculate its proper time that is called t naught t naught is called the original time t naught is called the proper time so when the clock is at rest with respect to an observer so the observer will observe the proper time that is called t naught okay and if the observer in different frame is relative motion will always be judged the time taken to be t so this is called relativistic time this is called relativistic time relativistic time means when the event is in motion with respect to the observer so that time is called the <coughs> t time relativistic time okay now the formula for the relativistic time is t is equal to t naught divided by 1 minus v square by c square this is the formula for the relativistic time here t is the relativistic time t naught is the proper time v is the speed of object c is the speed of light okay now we have <coughs> two frame of references 
one frame of reference is moving along with an with uh, with the event with the speed of light so suppose reference a is moving along with the with the clock with the speed of light so if reference a is moving with the speed of light along with the clock so it means with respect to reference a the speed of the clock is at rest the speed of the clock is zero if the speed of the clock is zero so it means that the clock will be at rest so now look at here look at here look at the formula t is equal to t naught 1 minus c square by c square so here the uh, speed of the clock is zero so we will put zero here so zero by c is zero so uh, t naught by 1 is t naught so the the observer or the uh, observer from the reference a will observe the proper time why because the clock is at rest or the clock is moving with uniform velocity with respect to reference a now suppose reference b is at rest and the clock is moving with the speed of light so it means that with respect to reference b the speed of the clock is c the speed of the clock is c so with respect to this frame of reference we are calculating the uh, relativistic time so the formula is t naught divided by 1 minus c square by c square under root okay what is the v v is c with respect to reference b okay now c by c is equal to 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 and anything divided by 0 is equal to infinite so the time will be dilated up to infinite time so the time is dilated up to infinite times so it means that this is the relativistic time <coughs> okay this is about the time dilation and another is the mass dilation this is the last application of science special theory of relativity mass dilation okay Dilation mean in uh, increase when there is an increase in the Increase in the mass, okay now Another consequence of Einstein theory is mass dilation, okay if the mass is at rest with respect to some observer and We want to calculate that mass so that mass will be called m naught m naught means the proper mass the rest mass the original mass okay same so not mean the proper mass the original mass or the rest mass okay now if the object is moving with respect to an observer so that is called the relativistic mass that is the relativistic mass okay the formula for the time dilation is m is equal to m naught 1 minus v square by c square under root if an object is at, re is at rest with respect to some observer so we want to calculate its mass okay look at here m is equal to m naught 1 minus 0 by c square 1 minus 0 by c square okay now what is 0 by c 0 by c is 0 okay and under root 1 is 1 so it is so we will observe its proper mass so if, if an object is at rest with respect to some observer so we will observe its proper mass okay original mass suppose suppose if an object is moving with speed of light with respect to some observer so now we can we are calculating its relativistic mass okay so here m is equal to m naught 1 minus c square divided by c square so putting the value of v that is equal to c so we put the value of v that is c so c by c is cancelled so c by c is 1 and 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 is 0 and anything by 0 is an infinite so the mass of the object will be get infinite so the mass will be increased means the energy will be converted into mass such that this mass will be get increases so um, <coughs> It means that whenever an object is moving with a very high speed its mass will be increased from its original from its original so that is called the mass dilation 
So these are the consequences of special theory of relativity. This is the end of the topic. If you have any queries, any questions, so com comments on this video or uh, text to the WhatsApp group. So I'll reply inshallah. Okay, take care, love is.